Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So guys, before moving ahead in this video, I have two to three things to discuss with you. The very first thing is your doubt. I have come across many students who have asked this question to me that whether we should cover the daily videos or we should cover the spotlight magazine. However, it doesn't matter to the students how many times I have told you this fact that the daily current affairs videos are made from the content that is provided in the spotlight magazine only. So, but at the same time, you also need to know that there are a limited set of questions in the videos in comparison to, to the questions that you have in your spotlight magazine. But guys, students are students, so they asked this query. So in order to eliminate this doubt of yours, what we have done is I have provided you with 30 questions in this video and you will find the detailed content of all these 30 questions as well as these questions in the document of February 24. Okay, so from now onwards, there would be no discrepancy in the video and the daily documents. From now onwards, there would be no question in my students minds that they should cover Spotlight magazine or they should follow the daily current affairs videos because the content of the Spotlight is picked into the videos only secondly the questions that are there in the spotlight i try to cover all the questions in the daily current affairs videos on the basis of the daily docs okay so the the spotlight is nothing but the compilation of the daily docs and here today i will be discussing with you all the news that i have covered for the document of february 24th so on that note let's begin today's video so guys, we have a lot of questions to discuss. So we will be quickly looking at the questions, their answers and uh, their gist in order to understand the news and memorize it for a longer period of time. So the first question is, which IIT has developed an application named Kisan for providing easy access to the agromat advisory services to farmers on their mobile phones? So here guys, the right answer is option E, IIT. Rudiki. Now, basically, under the Grami Mausam Seva program, Grami Mausam Seva program, this application has been developed by the IIT Rudiki, which will provide these meteorological services, the news related to the meteorology for the agricultural purposes to the farmers on their mobile phones. I hope it is clear. Let's move on to the next question. What is the outlay of the border infrastructure and management scheme for 2021 to 2022 to 2025 to 2026. Guys, here understand that the gist of this scheme, or I should say, the purpose of this scheme is summarized in its name itself border infrastructure and management scheme. So, what does it aim to do? It aims to develop the border of India, okay, across its land neighboring countries like Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Pakistan. So across Myanmar, across all these borders, the infrastructure will be developed under this scheme. And right now, this scheme has got an extension till 2025 to 2026. Guys, in the month of February only, many schemes have got extension. At the same time, they have got new outlays for the new tenure. So prepare a list of your uh, schemes that have got extensions in the month of February along with their new outlays because these are facts that you may forget and you have your RDI assistant coming up okay although in phase one you don't have current affairs but in phase two you have 40 questions so please don't take it lightly so what is the outlay of this scheme rupees 13,020 crores now I have told you the purpose of this scheme is Moving to the third question, which of the following paper has been released by Ministry of External Affairs to improve India's repute in international domain in the wake of India's declining democracy ranking. So guys, you must have come across various democracy indices that have showed a, a declined ranking for India, which shows that India is no more a democracy or we can say a free democracy. So we are turning into an elected autocracy. So these are some of the facts that you may come across uh, uh, in many reports. Now, in order to uh, 
improve India's position internationally and take an action against all these bankings, what the Ministry of External, uh, External Affairs has done. It has released a paper and the name of the paper or the title is the Indian Way. Okay. So this is nothing, just the paper that provides the Indian ethos and this paper basically, this paper has been circulated to the Indian ambassadors working in the foreign countries where they will work uh, according to this paper and try to improve India's image in the foreign countries as well. So that is the purpose of this paper and the max question that the examiner would ask from this is the title of this paper only. How many clusters have been approved under the Shama Prasad Mukherjee uh, Ruurban mission? So guys here, you need to understand that this scheme was launched in 2016 in order to transform 300 clusters. Now what are the Ruurban clusters? So these are basically, this is a portmanteau word combining rural plus urban. Now the rural urban means that the areas which are rural, but they are showing increasing uh, traces of urbanization. Okay, so rural plus urban, rural area which is showing the trends of urbanization. That is the idea of rural, uh, rural urban clusters. Now in order to transform these rural urban clusters and make the pace of urbanization faster, this scheme was launched in 2016. So far under this scheme, 296 clusters have been approved. So it is very close to its target, okay? Moving ahead, what is the family income ceiling for students to become eligible under the National Means Come Merit Scholarship Scheme? So basically, first let me tell you the information regarding this scheme, only then I can move to the income ceiling. So guys, this is a scheme of the Ministry of Education and the basic purpose of this scheme is to provide scholarship to the students of class 8th onwards. Okay, so that the students won't drop out of the school and they would continue their secondary education. So this is the purpose of this scheme. Now, how much of an incentive is provided to a student per month? So it is rupees 1000, okay, which cumulatively stands for 12,000 in a year, okay, per student. So all this the government is spending so that it can stop a student from dropping out from the school. Now guys, the income ceiling that is required for a student to become eligible to receive this funding because it is a general trend that the lower income houses tend to make their children drop out of the school and the houses that have a slightly better position in, uh, in terms of income, in terms of society, they tend to make their children continue their studies. Therefore, the focus here is on the lower society, lower families, okay, lower income class, lower income families. So the families which have 3.5 lakh of an annual income, okay. Earlier, this was 1.5 lakh, but with this uh, with the extension, the scheme has also got an extension till FY26. So with this extension, the income criteria has also been raised. Now 3.5 lakh per annum is the income criteria for the students to become eligible to receive the fellowship or we can say this amount of incentive so that they can continue their studies. Now guys, not only the income criteria, one more criteria is there for the students and that criteria is the examination so they have to go through a scholarship examination to get uh, this scholarship from the government now also understand that the scholarship money is now not provided at in the hands of the parents or in the hands of the children the money is directly transferred to the direct uh, through the direct benefit transfer mode in the bank accounts of the students so do remember this point as well now and also the portal which is the national scholarship portal through this portal the examination is conducted because national means 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 the resources the students who lack in resources the, because of the family income they need the scholarship under this scheme okay you can memorize it in this way but not only the not only on the basis of income they have to go through a merit test in order to get this scholarship.
so this way you can memorize the facts and the basic uh, structure of this scheme moving ahead um which of the following organizations has partnered with niti ayog for conducting a virtual consult consultation workshop on finance for decarbonization of transport so guys here option e world resource institute india and giz india both of these organizations cumulatively uh, organized this uh, forum with niti ayog and there is nothing in this news apart from this question that are that you are seeing in front of you. Next question is Which company has discovered oil block named Durga in a block of Burma Burma district, Barma district of Rajasthan? So here the right answer is Kiran Oil and Gas. Again, a very simple news. Moving ahead, who is the head of the Delimitation Commission of Jammu and Kashmir? So what is the news exactly? The news is that this commission of the Jammu and Kashmir has got an extension of two more months. Okay. So again, extension wala news hai, but this news is important. Now guys, do remember this commission was not made by the Jammu Kashmir administration. Okay, because I said this is the commission of Jammu Kashmir, but that does not indicate that this commission has been made by the administration of Jammu Kashmir. This is the commission created by the election commission of India to delimit, to mark the boundaries of election constituencies in Jammu and Kashmir. So we have discussed the news. Who is the chairperson of this commission? So it is Justice Ranjan, Ranjana Prakash Desai. What is the venue of Eastern Bridge 6 exercise? So guys, this is the sixth uh, edition of this Eastern Bridge exercise. Now this exercise is held between India and Oman. Okay, so do remember and from the options, you can clearly guess that which military force participates in this exercise. It's the Air Force. What is the venue of this sixth uh, edition of this exercise? So here, Air Force Station Jodhpur is the right answer. Which company has uh, signed an MOU with NASDAQ listed Ballard Power Systems to evaluate making joint investments for commercialization of hydrogen fuel cells in India? So here Adani is the right answer. Guys, these kinds of news do not hold much in themselves for discussion, but they are asked in the examination. Therefore, we need to pay attention to such news as well. Uh, and in order to keep that in mind, I have kept all these questions in this video and from now onwards, I'm going to make all the questions that are there in the daily documents in the video so that we can have a thorough discussion on the kinds of questions that are asked in the examination. Okay, so let's move on to the next question now. Sea Dome is the naval air, air defense system of which country? Okay, so here Iron Dome is the land air defense system which is installed on the land. This is the naval version of the Iron Dome. So which country has Iron Dome? It's Israel. So option A is the right answer. Next question is how much stake does ICICI Bank hold in the work financial services? Guys, uh, have you ever come across a portal named India Fillings? If you have ever come across this website, so you need to know that this website is owned by this organization named Verve Financial Services. Recently, this has signed an agreement with ICICI Bank to, uh, to sell its 9.49% uh, stake to the ICICI Bank. So this much stake is held by this bank in this company. Next question, according to the oil ministries, Petroleum planning and analysis cell India's fuel demand is estimated to rise to see a rise of dash percent on year to 214.5 million tons in FY23. So, so guys, again, an estimate made by the Ministry of Oil's particular, uh, we can say, uh, department. Okay. So this is a cell 
in the Ministry of Oil and it has predicted that in the coming year, the oil demand, the fuel demand in India is going to rise to 214.5 million tons, which is in percentage terms an increment of 5.5% from the previous year. Now, what is the uh, fuel demand in the previous year? Guys, this is something that you can purely leave here because again, I would say if you try to cram all the facts, then your head will blow off. Okay, don't do that. Otherwise, <clears throat> you will lag behind on other fronts. Okay, so we, we do not only have the current affairs in our examination, but at the same time, current affairs should not be neglected for any examination. Okay, moving ahead to the next question. In which cities has MasterCard launched its digital payment awareness campaigns? in partnership with SBI payment under its Team Cashless India campaign. Okay, so basically this Team Cashless India campaign was launched by MasterCard in 2019. And do you know who is the partner of MasterCard in this campaign? It is MS Dhoni. Okay, so all the cricket lovers, now you all would memorize it and this is going to stay in your mind for a longer period of time. Okay, because MS Dhoni is here. So with MS Dhoni, this Team Cashless India campaign was launched by MasterCard. What is the purpose? From the name itself, it is evident cashless means making the payments digitized. Okay, so the purpose of this, um, this campaign was to make individuals and the MSMEs in India digitized. Okay, make them aware about the digital payments and create financial awareness among them. But financial awareness that is limited to a certain extent to digital financial awareness only. Okay, now under this campaign only, the MasterCard has partnered with SBI Payments to conduct three campaigns, okay, in different cities. Now, what is the right answer? Option A, Guwahati, Varanasi, Lucknow. In all the three cities, MasterCard is going to conduct the campaigns under this program, under this campaign, umbrella campaign. <coughs> Sorry. Which bank has launched its launch name Onyx on Metaverse? So basically launch, this launch, this Onyx is a suite of services, a box of services for the bank's customers and the uh, services are basically the blockchain services that the bank offers to its customers. So which bank is it? It is the US based bank, which is at present the largest bank in the world. It is JP Morgan. <coughs> Sorry guys, which has become the first payment bank to, uh, to be an official acquiring partner for the government's e-rupee vouchers initiative, okay? So guys, regarding this e-rupee vouchers initiative, recently RBI has raised the limit for this e-rupee voucher transactions, okay? So earlier the amount was 10,000, now the new limit is your task. Mention it in the comment section below. Okay, so which bank is it? It is Paytm Payments Bank. Guys, please do mention the new limit of RBI, uh, provided by RBI regarding the e-rupee vouchers because this can be asked. Which of the... <coughs> Which of the following NBFC has signed a US dollar 68 million loan with Asian Development Bank to improve financial access to affordable green housing for lower income groups in India? Okay, so let me first give you a glimpse of this entire news. So basically, an, uh, a housing finance company has signed an agreement, a loan agreement with Asian Development Bank, okay, for an amount of US dollar 68 million. Now, this amount is going to be given to or refinanced to the housing borrowers okay the borrowers who are who have asked for the loans for building their own houses okay be it the individual borrowers or be it the constructors okay businessmen or the uh, real estates okay so any one of them who are seeking the loan for building houses or housing projects Okay, for that, this loan has been raised, but there is a condition to this loan, okay, that the 
seekers of the loan the borrowers need to adopt sustainable practices while building their by while building their houses okay so this is the condition of the asian development bank which has given this loan and the company which has got this loan is iifl housing finance limited okay so do remember this thing that sustainable construction practices needs to be adopted by the house constructors okay that is the precondition for availing the loan next question how much stake does bharti airtel own in the c me v6 and the c cable consortium so guys basically first let me tell you what is it exactly this consortium is basically a consortium of 12 companies okay from different uh, nations and under this project basically a uh, undersea cable is being laid down from singapore to france and in this project bharti airtel owns 20% of stake okay now this under sea cable is going to go through india only so india is also going to get benefit via bharti airtel okay because bharti airtel has owned the 20% share in this cable project only to get its services better to enhance its uh, services okay in india so that is the purpose of the bharti airtel getting 20% share in this cable project now it is going to be laid under sea okay from singapore to france now guys you must have heard about tonga blast the volcanic eruption that happened near tonga which had uh, we can say damaged the undersea cable that was connected with fiji that was the sole uh, connector between tonga and fiji that used to provide connectivity services to tonga okay so what my question for from you all is that tell me the capital of tonga which was completely we can say uh, destroyed or we can say uh, uh, covered in ash due to the volcanic eruption so tell me the capital of tonga what is it in the comment section below as far as this project is concerned i hope that you are now clear about this project it is nothing but a undersea cable project that is going to link singapore and france for better internet connectivity on the same lines the next question is here so which uh, ports will be connected via india europe express anchored by the lines geo okay so we have one india express india europe express and we have another india asia express and both of these projects are being anchored by the reliance geo and both of these again are the undersea cable projects that aim to provide connectivity to the island nations i will tell you about this but let's first discuss about this india europe express so this is going to connect mumbai to milan milan is a city in italy okay so from mumbai to milan uh, to milan uh, this project will be laid down now guys the india asia expressway so here you have india here uh, you have sri lanka sorry for my drawing guys and here is the maldives okay then uh, here at the bottom of malaysia you have uh, singapore right so what this india asia expressway is going to do it is going to connect india at through the undersea cable because connectivity is going to be provided through this project in maldives so from india maldives pe ye jayega undersea cable then it will be connected to singapore also okay so in this way if we uh, delete sri lanka in between okay however we cannot do so in reality and we need not to do that i'm just painting here so for your understanding making it drawing here for your understanding so this is how a triangular shaped undersea cable project is going to be laid by lines geo okay providing internet connectivity services from maldives to india or from india to maldives and to uh, singapore only and this is not going to be straight forward like this this is going to connect myanmar this is going to connect malaysia and thailand in between okay so this is not going to be like the straight 
line but we need not to go into the details how are they going to lay down this undersea cable we just need to know the focal points of this uh, india asia expressway that is being anchored by reliance g moving ahead to the next question which edition of the financial stability and um, development council meeting was held in mumbai under the chairmanship of union finance minister uh, shrimati uh, nirmala sitaraman sorry for my pronunciation guys so do remember that financial stability and development council uh, the chairman of this council is always the minister of finance whosoever it is okay so minister of finance is the ex official chairperson of this financial stability and development council the sub committee of this council okay is chaired by the governor of rbi now my question from you all is tell me the year in which this council was formed now coming back to this question 25th edition of this council was recently held in mumbai where they discussed nothing but uh they discussed about the economic situation the status quo in india that is oh, the only topic of discussion that they had in this meeting which we obviously do not need to delve into next question is what is the total amount of rbs planned us dollar india rupee sell by swap auction which will be held in march 2022 okay so before telling you the answer if you allow me let me explain you this entire thing what is this initiative okay so this is guys a swap option and your sell and buy is written so under this project what rbi aims to do rbi is going to sell dollars to banks to international banks okay apne bank ko dollar bech ke kya karenge hum theek hai for a certain period of time and the banks will provide rupee to rbi okay for the certain decided period of time then after this ten year gets over or the maturity period of this swap auction uh, or this swap facility comes closer what will rbi do rbi will repurchase the dollars for okay i should draw the arrow here repurchase the dollars okay from these banks now what is the purpose of doing this entire exercise the purpose is to appreciate the value of rupee okay because right now dollars will be supplied by india in the international market what will happen the supply of dollar will increase and the demand will decrease and the price will also decrease at the same time rupee is in demand then the value of rupee will be increased but why do we need to increase the value of uh, rupee so suddenly first reason is obviously that rupee is down sliding right now but the other most important reason here is that lic's ipo is coming okay and the government is also planning to open fdi in I lic for a approximately 20% now guys this is just a plan at the moment so do not think or write anywhere in your descriptive answers if you come across any descriptive answer uh, in your finance examination okay do not come across or do not write it in absolute terms write it as planning because right now it is just in the planning stage so lic's 20% stake will be sold off as per the plans or as per the sources okay in the international market so in that case in order to enhance the value of LI lic we need to appreciate the value of rupee as well and ipo ki wajah se bhi ye ho raha hai ye to bahut dur ka reason hai theek hai this is not the very near term situation but this is the near term situation ipo ki value subscribe ho jaye that is the objective because lic's ipo is coming up and the major objective is also there that rupee has been devalued iski बहुत ज्यादा वैल्यू कम हो चुकी है इंटरनेशनल मार्केट में सो इसकी वैल्यू को अप्रिशिएट करने के लिए भी दिस स्वैप ऑप्शन इज गोइंग टू हेल्प आर ओके नाउ फाइव परसेंट इज गोइंग टू बी सोल्ड फॉर सिक्सटी थ्री थाउजेंड करोड गाइस प्लीज अमाउंट याद रखेगा ओके दे कैन बी आज आई होप दैट दिस एंटायर फिनोम इज क्लियर सो नाउ दंसर इज यूएस डॉलर फाइव बिलियन फॉर दिस मच अमाउंट दी स्वैप 
facility will be conducted by RBI in the month of March. Guys, the next question here is who has been elected as a new chairman of International Rubber Study Group? So it is basically a group of <coughs> sorry of countries that produce natural or synthetic rubber. So Nam Singh Pata Chalra International Rubber Study Group. It is based in Singapore. Okay, do remember this fact as well. And recently from India, the person that has been selected is KL Raghavan for a tenure of two years. Okay, that's the news. Next question is who has been a, uh, recently inducted as a full-time member of the Economic Advisory Council to the PM. So do remember the chairman of this panel is Vivek Debro. Okay, the person is Sanjeev Sanyal, who is at present working as the principal economic advisor in the Ministry of Finance. Do remember his current position as well. When is the World Thinking Day observed? So guys, February 2022 is the date. What is the theme? So, Socho. World Thinking Day is the day. Socho, apne world ke baare mein. Socho future, equal future ke baare mein. Par equality kaha chahiye hume. Where do we need equality? We need equality in environment. Okay. Unequal uh, climate change ka impact par raha hai. All of this you can keep in your mind to retain this thing better. Okay. So environment and gender. So this is the theme. So let me put it down. Our world. Our equal future for the environment and gender equality. Sorry, guys, four was not there. Uh, okay, so four is not there, it's the colon. Colon the environment and gender equality so world thinking day socho apne world ke baare mein apne equal future ke baare mein aur equality kahan chahiye hame equality chahiye environment ki field mein equality chahiye gender ki field mein okay so this is how you can remember the theme of the world thinking day for this year Next question is, what is the venue of the 34th Federation Cup Volleyball uh, Championship? So, Bhubaneswar, guys, is the right answer here. Now, you need not to memorize the winners here because the winners are uh, not clearly mentioned. For example, in the men's category, services is mentioned. Services has beaten railways to win the volleyball championship. So, obviously, this kind of question won't be asked. But in women's category, Kerala has won, okay? The team from Kerala has won, therefore they can ask this question. So do remember in women's category, Kerala has won. Next question is who has composed the Vande Bharatam song? Okay, so if you had seen the Re Republic Day Parade of 2022, so there was for the first time a dance performance, okay? So that dance performance was performed on the song Vande Bharatam. So who has actually composed the tune of this uh, song? It is Ricky Cage and Vikram Ghosh. So here option B is the right answer. Now do remember that this person's person, uh, speciality is tabla. He is a tabla miastro. Okay, so Vikram Ghosh uh, is a tabla miastro and both of them have composed the song Vande Bharatam. Which of the following promoters of SBI life insurance company has been reclassified as a public shareholder? So guys here BNP Paribas Cardiff is the right answer. When did Saudi Arabia celebrate its foundation day for the first time? So guys this has been asked because recently it has happened. February 2022. Uh, February 22. Under which scheme of the government is the Aam Janta Ka portal launched. So guys, it is launched under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Gram. Now it is nothing but the data of the work done under this scheme. Uh, the data of the work done un under this scheme is provided on this portal. 
and the last question for the day is who has become the youngest chess player ever to defeat Magnus uh, Carlsen. So guys, he is the world number one player, chess player. So he belongs to Norway. Do remember this fact. And Ramesh Babu uh, has become the youngest chess player in the world to defeat Magnus Carlsen. Right now he is 16 years old. Okay. So he has defeated him in an online chess tournament. So that is for all. Uh, that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the content provided by us, do provide your uh, feedbacks also in the comment section below. And at the same time, you can subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any kind of feedback regarding the video, do mention it in the comment section and do not forget to mention the answers as well. Okay, thank you so much. Good day. Good luck.